Okay, this is like part two or part three of the uh, Briggs L206 uh, cylinder head that I'm fixing on uh, one of our, our Steve's card engines. Uh, my friend Steve Addison, he's got, I got the both of them here. This one here uh, is the one I did the leak down test on and major intake uh, valve leaking. If you look at this valve real close, it's kind of concave, eh? So, you know, I really think just a new valve and lapping it's going to be okay. But I just got in home here uh, about an hour ago and the valve seat cutting tool kit that I ordered off Amazon was here. So it's pretty cool. It was only around $75. A real good one is like, you know, five, 600 probably, the new way type one. But I thought I'd just order this anyways and try it out. So here's my 45 degree angle uh, seat cutter. And um, to me, I don't really think I really needed to do it, but I gave it a couple of little rubs, like a couple turns. And to me, it looks like it's pretty, pretty decent. I went to Canadian Tire earlier to get some gun bluing. I was going to put some gun bluing on here or some permanent marker so you can see uh, how um, round and square or how round the um, valve seat is that it's touching all the way around when you use it uh, when you do the valve seat uh, cutting tool with it. Right? So to me it looks it's pretty darn good. So what I'm going to do now, um, this kit comes with the guide pin that fits in the um, valve guide perfectly because it's got to be centered right and it um, went right in and I only did like two or three turns with it eh? you don't need to do a lot I, I just feels nice and smooth and I really don't think it's bad actually so that's why now I'm just going to grab the new new valve I'm just going to brake clean this up and um, put a little lapping compound on the on the see how it is okay so i can only get some of this permatex valve grinding compounds a little rough but i also got some of this um some dremel stuff that is a fine paste and i'm going to finish it with it so uh i'll find that in a second here but uh, oh there it is right there okay it's like a fine uh polishing compound right so we'll see how that works afterwards but let's get the let's get uh to seal in this valve and see how it laps in and then we'll clean it off and 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 look at the valve and see if it's uh lapped all the way around decently some guys say they don't actually lap their valves they just cut their seats and put new valves in well that's probably fine but a couple a buddy a couple a buddy of mine mark benny there was telling me that he always laps them so I, i'm gonna do that because he's very smart and he's an excellent four-stroke uh engine rebuilder and, and automotive uh car engine builder he's built wicked racing motors and stuff so he knows what he's talking about i'm a two-stroke uh chainsaw mechanic guy right but i do get all the theory about it so now i'm just going to uh shut the compressor off in case it starts up as we're doing this but, but i'm going to show you the technique that he showed me instead of using the old um you know lapping stick that everyone's had for years in their small engine stuff if you ever used to do old tecumseh and Briggs Briggs engines, right? You'd go like this, right? Well, that's 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 a decent way to do it for sure. And these are cheap. I think I bought this at, I think KMS Tools or something. It was like ten bucks or twelve bucks or something. You can buy a lot of these tools pretty cheap. They're not they're not the best quality, but they'll do the job. So let's just shut the compressor off, and we're gonna try this this one first. So this is the decent way to do it. So what you do, you don't need to put a lot of compound on, okay? Just, just, just a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. Get it in, into your guide. Hook your uh, drill to it. Okay. Take your drill and just go. Okay, you can go both directions if you want. I don't know if that makes a difference, but why not, eh? So that's just a little bit we've done it already, right?
Go the other way again a little bit. As long as it's sealed, eh? Okay. Let's take that off now. Take our valve out. We'll brake clean the valve. Car cleaner or brake clean, right? Just something that's going to get rid of the residue. Have yourself some, some paper towel or mechanics towel. Let's have a look at this now. Okay, nice line, pretty much even all the way around the valve. And if you can see that, you see that gray line right in the middle of the valve. So you know the seat and the valve is contacting right in the middle, right? That's where that's where I always thought that should work good, doing old Tecumseh and Briggs valves years ago, right? So that thing's touching all the way around. Now let's look at our valve seat. Get a little brake clean on that. A little bit of air. And let's wipe it too with, with more brake clean, just because. Okay. That seat to me... Looks like it's touching pretty evenly all the way around. Yeah. I think it's pretty good. I'm going to give it a little bit more. And then I'm going to um, do the same process with the exhaust valve. But I'm going to try the exhaust valve that was in it. Because remember, we didn't really have much leakage on that exhaust valve. So if I can just lap that exhaust valve back a little bit, why not, right? With the one that original one that's in it. Because uh, me, the, the exhaust seat looks really good, actually. It looks like it's it's pretty decent. But you know what? We're going to do the exact same thing I did with the intake one. I'm going to run that run the, um, the seat cutter just a little bit on it, a couple turns. And then I'm going to try the original exhaust valve and see how it laps in. Because it didn't look concave like this bad intake one that was leaking like crazy, right? So I'm going to do that process now with both valves and then we're going to get turn it around and we're going to put the um valve springs and keepers back in so we'll get back i'll do another video in a little second and we're going to join them together okay it's sunday night by the way normally i don't work sunday nights but i got a lot of stuff to do because i'm going on vacation soon so i want to get it done so and this is important to me to be able to help my buddies with motors and other people to help them out or they can go out buy these tools and do it themselves so that's what it's all about, man. You know, like teaching your kid, teaching yourself. There's nothing wrong with learning something. You know, if you don't have time for it or, you know, or whatever, then you, you pay people like myself or other cart shops around. I'm not really a cart shop. It used to be, of course. Um, but uh, you know what I mean. You get it. So anyways, catch you in a bit. Okay, so I just showed you how to do the cut the valve seats and lap the valves. Now I'm um, gonna show you how to put the valves, new valve springs on and the keepers on. I bought myself this tool when I was down at Las Vegas on my birthday in, in March. So it's, uh, you can uh, hold down the valve with it to get your keepers in decently, okay? I'm gonna come up with an air fitting that you can put in the spark plug hole that you can actually hold the valves up with like I used to do on Hondas years ago and be able to just change them without removing the head. That's a bonus. Um, but I wanted to get this head off and redo it anyway. So, And we're going to do another leak down test after we get all this together. So first of all, valve springs, okay, they, they vary, okay. Here's the two old ones, and they're around 894 thousandths tall. The new ones are about 920 to 923 tall. So what I did is I brought home four of them, and I had the two tallest ones are the ones I'm going to use. If you are going to do valve springs, yeah, buy yourself half a dozen. You're going to use them up anyway. They're not that expensive, and and get the most even ones you can to to put in them. You know, some guys have the opportunity to have more money, and they can buy a lot more of them and find the tallest ones. But you got to remember, there's rules about these. You read your rule book, man. Keep, remember, everyone's supposed to have one in their pit. The thickness of the wire, how many coils there are, and, and the tallness of it. And I believe there's a pressure thing too, but I don't have a valve spring pressure tester. So that's the way I'm doing it. So now I got my valve in there. And this tool, I might as well show you the tool, how it works. Um, 
You can buy these for about 50, 60 bucks, I believe, online from most cart shops down in the U.S. now or maybe in Canada with like cart works from Ontario or, or other places, okay? So you, you thread this onto your rocker stud here, okay? Um, about six cranks, I think I did it, okay? Then put your valve spring on, your new one. Bell spring uh, keeper on top. Turn this over now. And let's see if you screwed it on far enough to actually get it far enough down to put the keepers on. Yeah, you did for sure. Okay, so about six turns on of the threads. They do have a little set screw in the back here. You can lock that onto it if you want. I guess it's made for um, all different uh, types of uh, motors, right? So I'm going to give that a lock on there anyways, just to hold it on there. Okay, so now... These little keepers are easy to lose. The little tiny keepers for the top here. I tried it earlier just because I watched a guy on YouTube pushing down the spring and putting the keepers in it, but it was quite awkward, okay? So I'm going to show you with the tool here how, how it is a little easier. Uh, keep yourself a magnet around too so you don't lose anything, right? Okay, so let's push our, our tool down. It holds itself down, right? Pretty cool. Put our keepers in. Um, got to put them the right way around. That's why I got this little magnet. The thicker end of it up, okay? So it goes in the groove. Put that one in. That one in. Have yourself a little tiny screwdriver around in case you need to like, fish it around a bit to get it centered, okay? Just going to move that around. Okay, I made it look real easy the second go when I did it. Okay, oh, see, that one fell out, fell out again. Get that back in there. Come on, baby. Okay, it's in there. They're both in there. You can kind of just, this thing's magnetic, which is was terrible. This one here isn't. So just move them in. Make sure they're right in that groove. Okay. And just simply let the tool go. Look at that. Boom. Bam. They're in there perfect. Yeah. Can't beat that, eh? So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six turns. And there's another thing you check once in a while, too. These rocker studs. I remember one new engine that um, we had a couple years ago. These things were actually loose. So um, check those on a new motor. Or even uh, as you're doing your motor work. So it's a 10 mil wrench. Yeah, yeah, those, that one's tight. That one's tight, good. So what I did, because when you use this tool, or you try to push down with your thumbs, you're pushing the valve, right? So you need something underneath to hold the valves up. So what I did here is I just took a piece of, piece of wood, good old BC wood. It's made a little piece there for the valves, right? Set, it, set that down in my vise. So the wood's on the bottom of the vise and simply clamp the head in there, you know, just, you don't have to do it super tight, just enough to hold the head steady so you can work on this thing easier, right? So there you go. That tool, doing that, very simple. So now I'm going to repeat the process to do the um, intake valve. I just did the exhaust valve. And then I'm going to put this thing back together, torque the head to the manufacturer specifications. And with it, before I put the, um, the, um, Lifter rods or push rods in or rockers. We're going to air test, air vacuum, or leak down test it again to see how how I did out with, did with the valves, okay? So that'll be next episode. Give me a couple minutes here, and we're going to get that happening. Okay, fellow carters and everyone else in the world. Got the head back on, got it torqued up to 200 and 20 inch pounds um, got the air tester back in it got my crank pull down tool on it so the crank won't turn as i put pressure in it so let's now see where where we're at remember uh, the previous video the first one I did about a leak down test it had major major intake valve uh, leak down and now i put the new uh, intake valve in it relapped them both uh, touched the seat just with the cutter just a bit I don't think they really needed to be done. Um, new head gasket, cleaned it up a bit, you know, some of the carbon out of it. But, you know, maybe if you leave a little carbon in, you get a little more compression, eh? Anyways, I did clean quite a bit of it up.
So let's put it in there, put some pressure in it now. Oh, I can hear a little leakage. Okay, let's check our gauge. I'm at 80 pounds in, and we're about 20, 25, 30, 30, about 27% leaked out. So I got a little bit in the crankcase. If I hold that, that's just because the engine's cold too, so it does go by, by the rings a little bit. And I got just a little bit in the exhaust. Darn it, I should have lapped that one a little more. But as you run this motor, or sometimes even just tap the valves a couple times. Well, a little better. So maybe just after they run in a bit, they'll seat better, okay? So, but yeah, very minimal out of the crankcase. Just a whisper out of the exhaust. I think we did good. So there you go. Doing the head, uh, that didn't take a long time, but, you know, I just had to improvise and make a couple tools. And I'll get these down path, down down path, I should say. So, there you go, man. There's a leak down test successful with a Briggs L206 motor, or with any other motor that you're you're working on. If it's your lawnmower, or tractor motor, or whatever, even if it's a car, same same sort of theory. So on this gauge, you see it. The blue is set. Uh, green is in low, so it had very low leakage. So yeah, 25 to 27 percent we had. Uh, I'm not going to take it apart and lap that exhaust one anymore. I believe that'll seat in. We'll see how it goes. So maybe what I will do with this motor, though, I'm going to keep track of this motor. This motor uh, doesn't have a lot of time on it, uh, but it had enough to, to wear that intake valve off. Maybe that's because we rev them so high on the uh, rev limiter on this racetrack, which is more of a road race course instead of a sprint course, really. But we're on the throttle a lot, so... Or it was just a bad valve, you know, it had bad, bad material. But so yeah, that's what I did. Valve springs, a new, new intake valve, and now I'm going to put the rockers on, push rods back in, set my valve lash, and put everything else back together. So there you go. That's how you do it. Um, that turned out all right. I'm quite happy about that. And um, then I'll get on to do the next motor, uh, the other one of Steve's, and see how that one works out. So. Yep, get yourself some tools. You can do this, or if not, bring her by. I'll give you a hand, and I'll go from there. So, there you go. Get your saw and whisk, stick your knife, rubber on the road. Your card engine tuned up right. Thumbs up for carding. Have a great night, Sunday night. Uh, Shelly's just making us some sa sausages and pierogies upstairs, so it's kind of a pierogi night. So, yeah, been a good weekend, and this week should be great. Finish this weekend off, and then off off for my vacation for a bit. I got a lot of saws to do, get get some out, more out to some of the customers, and some more for the Walker Saw Shop. So, and by the way, the Walker Saw Shop, uh, Johnny, uh, putting a list together for him to get a, a lot of the parts for these. Uh, we're not a we're not allowed to buy engines and sell them, which is kind of weird. But we're a Briggs and Stratton dealer. I can buy every part for these. So Johnny's gonna have a stock of like your basic stuff, gaskets, jets valve springs head gaskets you don't need nothing for the bottom end because they're a sealed motor so why would you stock rings or a camshaft or anything like it's stupid you do you we do have short blocks there though and a head assembly so and fuel pumps so we'll have all that stuff soon well we already got some but we're gonna have a lot more of it and that way any guys anyone needs parts for these um, instead of having to go through the u.s or back east we'll at least have your parts but you're still going to have to buy a complete engine from a, a proper Briggs & Stratton Motorsport dealer, which is kind of odd, but whatever. That's the way they, they got it. So there you go. I don't see them people out there helping people out with this stuff, though, eh? But this old independent one does. I had my master technicians from Briggs & Stratton uh, back 30 years ago. I went to a course years ago in Vancouver, and, you know, they were all the old... Uh, uh, flathead top type motors though before now all the old overhead valve motors are in but anyways rambling on enough have a great night thumbs up see y'all later